You're watching Me Talk Mini, and I'm your host, CJ. Welcome back to another album review. And today's album review will be of Kill Switch Engage. I didn't, re I didn't do a poll this week to decide which one because I was kind of uh, tight on time. So I decided to do a very small discography with eight studio albums on it, which is, yeah, one of the best metalcore bands of all time and one of the one of my favorite bands of all time, honestly. Um, I know a lot of other people would also say so, but yeah, I'm huge into Kill Switch Engage. It's yeah, I've seen them live once before, and that was during uh, 2019. Like they got two shows in, and then it got canceled due to the uh, COVID-19. The pandemic started, and then the, all the shutdowns came. Like it was like two days before the shutdown, but yeah, eight studio albums. Let's get into it. Number eight. Or my least favorite one is going to be the Kill Switch Engage 2 from 2009. The second of the self-titled records. And not last because of it being bad as this album scores at a 9.8 out of 10. I don't connect to this album as much as the others. But I can, I can and do enjoy it. There's a lot of good songs on here. But the slower ballady songs are what really throw me off. And... It just doesn't feel like Kill Switch Engage at some points in this album and kind of brings it down. I kind of like the aggression and its intensity on some of the other ones. Um, my favorite song is, is from this one is I Would Do Anything. There's It's it's kind of like a mix between the power or like the ballady stuff and the uh, hard hitting stuff all in one song. Definitely think that's a good variety right there and... Kind of shines above the other songs. Number seven is the 2000 Kill Switch Engage album or Kill Switch Engage One, the uh, first self-titled debut. This is yeah the debut album and a fine start from this band. The first wildly successful metalcore release with a sound that would define the genre. Um, I would definitely say this is the uh, like the first like really modern day metalcore release where it's like really good like produced good quality truly is a masterpiece with how heavy and intense it is and not to mention how nothing like this was ever done beforehand to this good of a level um the reason i'm praising it and it's this low in the list is the band improved but i still have to give credit where credit's due a 10 out of 10 it's perfect. It's a perfect album, but it just falls low on the list. My favorite song in the album is Irreversal. Definitely a very good song. Um, yeah. As you're going to see which vocalist I actually prefer for Kill Switch Engage. Big surprise. And this one is a big surprise and very controversial to have this low on the album ranking. Is The End of Heartache or the 2004 album. Um, the most recognizable album to people who listen only to mainstream music, uh, mainstream, like, heavy and, uh, rock and metal, they're gonna, they're gonna see the end of Heartache being, like, one of the premier albums from this band, but I would have to disagree, I think some of the other records are better. Uh, it may be controversial to have this album so low on the list, but I just think the other albums are better, honestly. The album starts out with a banger, a bid farewell, just and just continues the hard-hitting, unrelenting, as we all know and love from Killswitch. My favorite song from Heartache is World Ablaze, as I think it's just, I just think it's an epic song. And... Yeah, it's a great song on this one. Uh, has a different like tone to it from the previous two. The previous two were more like in-your-face metalcore. This is more like a uh, chorus-driven part. Number five is actually controversial as well, which is a daylight is daylight dies or the one right after end of heartache and probably their most successful one. This is the best album with Howard on vocals. An absolute banger. This album is amazing, honestly. Um, it, 
And this one also is the Younger Me's high school favorite. When I was in high school, I absolutely loved this record, but I kind of outwore it. I kind of outwore it, just like every other thing that I outwore in high school. Yeah, I was pretty cringe, but yeah. I think this album is their most commercially successful release, and to see, and I can see why with the song selection on it. Daylight, uh, Daylight does what Heartache does, but better, with Daylight being more complex and hard-hitting. Um, and that is, like, chorus-driven, but still has those really good choruses. It's, like, just, uh, this album is done way better than, uh, the End of Heartache. Um, I'm sure you're surprised to see this album here, but Position 5 of the 1 was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, and this was the hardest ranking I've ever had to do, basically, on this channel. So yeah, this is one of the hardest ones I've had to do. Uh, this is actually a re-rank of one that I did back in like, yeah, my old videos suck. Um, number four is Incarnate from 2016. Extremely heavy and inspired. This album was my favorite back when it came out. But has fallen down the list. I feel like this is an overlooked album as the material with Jesse. Um, always has been, songs are some of the best metalcore around, is some of the, and is all around a fantastic choice when going for a Kill Switch album. Um, 10 out of 10, of course, a 10 out of 10, my favorite song is Embrace the Journey Uprised, Appraised, or however you say it, it's an absolute banger song. Um, yeah, it's just... It's a fucking epic song. I just love every part of that, like every part of this record. Number three is another one that usually people have flow, which is Disarm the Descent from 2013, the return of Jesse and what a return it was. This album is straight fire and shows it doesn't matter if it's Jesse or Howard. Kill Switch can always turn out some good masterpieces and... Yeah, turn out some absolutely classic metalcore. Uh, the songs are some of the most underrated Kill Switch songs they have, and not a lot of people talk about them. The riffs are straight brutal, and the guitar tone is top tier. I see mo on most people's list this album is near the bottom. All I can say is why, honestly. Why would this be at the bottom of your list? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to, uh, definitely, uh, kind of, like, give you the side eye for that, but, yeah, insert the TikTok sound. I spend too much time on TikTok. I should, uh, stop, I uh, should, uh, get off TikTok for a little while. Um, Atonement, 2019. Number two, three, and four were so damn hard to rank, and all three could could be here at every any given day. But today I have to go with Atonement at number two. You already know what number one is, or if you've never watched, uh, or if you've never heard of Kill Switch before, I don't know how you wouldn't have if you are a fan of metal or metalcore. I don't know how the hell you would not, not have heard of this band. Uh, this album is insane from the opening minute, with its, and it's banger after banger all the way through. The song that I'm going to mention is my fa favorite, is the one that I'm talking about from the opening minute. Um, 2019 was a year full of great heavy albums, and this one was at the top, in my opinion, was at the top, in my opinion, would have been like two, three, or four favorite from that year. Um, yeah, songs like Signal Fire, uh, had, uh, Howard, on, had Howard actually as a guest vocalist on that song. Ravenous, I Can Be The... I Can't Be the Only One, Know Your Enemy, uh, As Sure as the Sun Will Rise, just some great stuff on here, and the album that I seen them for the tour for, so they basically played everything off this album. Um, a favorite song from Atonement is Unleashed, um, as I mentioned before, Unleashed is just like brutal since the opening minute, it, like kicks your ass into the record, like basic, yeah, just... It's, it's just an ass kicker, honestly. 
Number one, Alive or Just Breathing from 2002. Yeah, truly one of the greatest albums to come out of Metalcore. Um, and the album is just... It's what put Kill Switch on the map, in my opinion. Uh, I think they... They toured with some pretty big bands back in 2002 when this one came out. Um, yeah, I was basically only like two... Or almost like one or two years old when this came out, but... Re-listening to it in high school and recently. Yeah, this album is my favorite of Kill Switch and probably will be for the rest of my life. This The whole album is destructive from start to finish and the songs are just classic. The, the album gives me fond memories of the past and a lot of nostalgia associated with it. A lot of... Uh, I've listened to this album over like over a thousand times, honestly. It's one of my favorites. Um... I think Jesse's vocal performance is top notch and the guitar tone is top notch. Truly, Kill Switch Engage's best record. I know I'm going to get a lot of people to disagree with this and say that, like, End of Heartache or As Daylight Dies. Nah, I definitely prefer this album, like, the, like, older sound, the older Jesse Leach sound, and even the newer stuff, too. Um, my favorite Kill Switch song is Fixation on Darkness. It's just an absolute classic. Not the big hit from the record. The big hit from the record was My Last Serenade or uh, Number of Days. Life to Lifeless is pretty good as well. This is just a record that you guys need to check out. It's one of the best. Th it's one of the best albums ever. Honestly, it would probably fall at one of my favorites of all time. But yeah, that's what. That's how I would rank Kill Switch Engage. Uh, tell me more bands to rank in the comments section. I'm not doing any like pop. I'm not doing any like hip hip hop or anything like that. Um, because really, I don't have the audience for it. I'm basically a metal channel and metal core, uh, death core, that type of stuff. I go into death core pretty often. Um, so yeah, I will see everyone in the next video and. Uh, Whenever I upload again.